Hi friends. So uh, today we are into the ninth module of our risk-based engineering, and uh, the topic is uncertainty. So subsequent five lectures will be there on uncertainty and related aspects. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde, and uh, um, uh, basically I am from Homi Bhabha National Institute, uh, and then. And today we will discuss uh, risk based engineering. Uh, the theme is uncertainty characterization. Okay. So, um, before I uh, go on to the introduction part of this uh, lecture, I um, will discuss what all we are going to discuss in this uh, week, that is, ninth week. Uh, first will be introduction. And uh, introduction. Um, will be around uh, like 8 to 10 slides where I will cover the background aspect of uncertainty, um, risk and, uh, and uh, related uh, overview of methodology and all. Uh, in lecture 2 purely it will be based on overview of uh, risk uh, and uh, uncertainty, um, focusing on uncertainty and the related uh, uh, rela relation with the uh, risk and uh, then just to give you an idea or introduction to uh, one of the uh, or two approaches, uh, we will introduce these approaches and later on uh, various methodology approach uh, will be discussed in the next uh, lecture. That is one is on parametric uh, aspect of uncertainty analysis and uh, then second, uh, the next lecture that is fourth lecture, it will be on fuzzy aspects. So uh, basically there are two, parametric and uh, uh, we can say Bayesian. Uh, approach and then fuzzy logic. So uh, these are the things we will be discussing and then uh, finally I will be devoting uh, 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 some time on Monte Carlo simulation. Why? Because Monte Carlo simulation is at the core of uh, all risk, risk assessment activities and that is how the Monte Carlo becomes important uh, because without characterizing the upper bound and lower bound which are treated or considered as representation of uncertainty uh, is very important and that is why this topic that is Monte Carlo simulation was uh, uh, a fitting topic uh, for this uncertainty characterization. So uh, in introduction uh, I will say the Bhagavad Gita it asserts that in this world of uncertainty only death is certain. and the fear is apparent. That means it is uh, in a philosophical language it is not real. Um, it is subjective, okay, how we feel it. Um, and then uh, when we talk about uh, these uh, aspects, then uh, a question comes in our mind, what is the difference between uh, uncertainty and risk? Because these two terms are uh, used, uh, you know, uh, exchangeably, you know. So, uh, um, there, is a, there is a difference and that we will understand because before we get on to the topic uh, on uh, uncertainty, uh, we should get this uh, background information and understanding. And then uh, approaches for uncertainty characterization and then since we are in our risk based engineering and uh, the, the core module is, uh, uh, core module is uh, uh, PRA, so we will see how uh, uncertainty is uh, discussed in or represented in PRA and then how it is adopted in risk based engineering. Then um, all through uh, the lecture uh, whether it is first, second, third, the, there will be a touch on management aspect of uncertainty. And then finally uh, how to take decision under uncertain condition. So there are some uh, um, mathematical tools, uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, you know human related aspects. So these are very important and we have to understand that. Okay, so uh, let us try to understand the risk. Risk is always connected with the consequences and likelihood because even it is a mathematical expression. So uh, often uh, it was, it was uh, uh, challenging to get a very proper definition of uh, risk um, and then um, it was thought that let us, uh, that let us consider the uh, mathematical formulation and try to give the uh, definition of risk. So, it uh, uh, likelihood of events leading or having potential for undesired consequences. They may be real, they may not be real, they may not happen at all. But it is a sort of a perception 
and that's how we have scientific connotation that means risk can be expressed as uh, likelihood into consequences for the number of scenario that we consider likelihood means frequency and the consequences meet uh, it could be fatalities it could be injury uh, and it could be a loss to property environment health effect and uh, that's how we say uh, risk uh, of course normally r is used for um, reliability uh, in risk based engineering but here uh, in in the, in a isolated manner i am saying risk is equal to um, uh, summation of uh, likelihood and consequences for each of ith event uh, from 1 to n so uh, having seen what is uh, risk now let us understand what is uncertainty and then we'll be able to appreciate what is the difference you know a situation or event which is unpredictable due to inherent or random variability we know that uh, all the aspects of life and as it was uh, asserted in the first slide except death uh, we are in a cloud of uncertainty okay so uh, any aspect of life we take and uncertainty is there but there are two component to uncertainty there is one component uh, which is called epistemic uncertainty which can be reduced if we try to work on data model methods uh, you know and uh, uh, management approaches that uncertainty can be reduced but again at the end of the day uh, there is a core uncertainty which is called aleatory uncertainty it cannot be reduced because it comes as a part and parcel of whatever data model or method that is there so that means uncertainty can be reduced but it cannot be altogether eliminated because it is random in nature is it truly random in nature uh, even availability of data will not be able to uh, uh, reduce this uncertainty so um, uh, now we know that uh, uncertainty is a part and parcel risk can be managed Uh, but uncertainty is a uh, part of any aspect of life whether, whether it is a, a system structures or component or human factor or even uh, 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 you know modeling for uh, modeling for environmental condition it is there so uh, that much minimum should be acceptable so now we have this uncertainty with us and that is we can say it is inherent variability uh, with the uh, various aspect of life or engineering um, but then when we make the complex system uh, the risk and uncertainty as we discussed we have accepted that it is part and parcel of this only thing is how uh, risk can be reduced so that it is acceptable that means if we give the benefit and uh, risk optimization the benefit component should uh, you know uh, should should be very high while yes the risk component should be negligible then only the risk becomes Uh, acceptable okay there are mathematical limitation and all those things the details we have discussed in pra uh, and we'll be uh, discussing later also and we also uh, discuss when we are talking about uh, uncertainty and risk assessment the major contributor uh, at least in mathematical term or when we are modeling complex system we can say the common cause failure that means one event can lead to multiple failures the number one and the human factor why human factor because human is a complex Uh, system uh, it uh, for uh, so um, the uncertainty associated with the even in the technical term we find uh, uncertainty for common cause failure and human factor is more and it can be only reduced to some extent but it cannot be eliminated altogether uh, but then you know we have been designing complex systems since ages when uncertainty and uh, sort of risk also uh, they were not all that well known uh, so how people uh, people designed Uh, right in 50s and 6 uh, 60s or even before that um, they designed a co complex system like um, aircraft so uh, our aviation system uh, so what was the what was the, how they managed it and they managed, they they did a very good job uh, even though this mathematical uh, uh, complex system computational they, these things were not available and they were done a good job you know so the uh, issue is that it was accepted there will be uncertainty and data and model and methods there so design a system in such a manner given that if it is a system it will fail so if it fails then there should be a backup system okay so what we are trying to say is the sufficient redundancy was uh, was 
part of the system so that if one system fails, second system comes. And this approach altogether in the computer uh, parlance or even in uh, defense, it is, it is called defense in depth approach. Okay? And then uh, there is one more thing called diversity. If we design the redundant system using the same philosophy uh, or same methods, uh, there is a good possibility that bo both the system can be knocked out. So a diversity concept that means one system is operating on, um, uh, on one principle, another uh, system is operating on a different principle. So even if the event occurs, at least one system will be available. And then uh, while designing itself, uh, because all the data engineering uh, parameters, they came with uncertainty. So a very, very uh, magic uh, uh, magic uh, uh, technology that is called factor of safety that was developed. That means a design was kept very conservative. However uncertain the situation or uh, aspects is, uh, the factor of safety used to capture all the uncertainty. Uh, I would not say all, but 99.99% of uncertainty and risk and finally, we have uh, a system which is operating in a safer manner. And now we are in uh, 2024. It's the time which is endorsing these traditional uh, approaches. And let us believe that okay, the next engineering or science also have developed keeping this fundamental defense in the principle, redundancy, diversity, fail-safe criteria, uh, single failure criteria. These are the thing which has given us the light to go ahead for developing this uh, mathematical and computational environment. Now, uh, uh, probabilistic and statistical models, they are basically at the core of uh, uncertainty management. Uh, so if it is a data uncertainty, collect more data. If it is a model uncertainty, it is, uh, is uh, fine-tune the model with some experiments. And then if it is an information uncertainty, then use some method so that this information can be used like fuzzy logic can be used to convert linguistic variable into, um, uh, into um, uh, uh, not probability, but possibility. But then we have a quantification membership function and all. We can integrate it, this uh, same thing. That is even human factor also uh, with our uh, risk model of the plant. And then, uh, improved framework was has always been ongoing exercise and that is basically in the area of again I would say common cause failure and uncertainty. For what I just told uh, this uh, illustration it shows that earlier we used to have this uncertainty and then you can see large factor of uh, safety F used to be there but then uh, and we had this approach is called deterministic approach. So slowly slowly a movement towards probabilistic approach has begun and now uh, we define stress and strength. Here also you can see because knowledge was not there, so they were much apart and a, uh, a factor of safety of 2.5 or uh, 1.5 or even 3, uh, they were not something unseen things actually uh, because that was the only way to fight out uncertainty and uh, you know uh, potential risk. And now here we have, the since our data is available and uh, then we, have, we can see that when stress and strength they overlap each other, then we have this failure probability reason. And this gives us an information, what is the possibility of failure in the future? It is due to degradation, it is miscalculation, it could be a real time phenomena where calculation would have gone wrong everywhere. So what basically we do is, we operate between this and this. That means we keep apart this distribution in a manner that the overlapping area is reduced, only chance brings them together. Uh, either it could be some defect uh, which was which has gone undetected, so that reduced the strength of the uh, system, or it could be corrosion, or it could be any complex phenomena, uh, some degradation. So uh, if we keep them apart, to some extent we can uh, avoid the failure. And this is how the past system has given us a learning, and we have now uh, now uh, stress strength model as one of the core model for uncertainty characterization. We'll see how. In fact, this model goes into bridging. Uh, the procedure even for human factor. We will see in one of our lecture. Okay. Now management how it is done. One is I told you the structural component it was by stress strength model. But then when you come to operation, what we do in operation, uh, operation also, we uh, as I mentioned the human factor is uh, uh, one of the major contributing factor in our complex engineering system. Uh, but then even that we have achieved by training up personnel. That means a, a, a human uh, has been brought to uh, merge with the system by training so that 
um, so that the chances of committing um, error uh, reduces as he becomes senior further reduces training 90% of the or i will say 99% component for uh, risk was cut down and further even point 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 zero zero one and that's how we get the human error probability so that uh, training is one of the important thing which uh, merges the human uh, with the system okay and then uh, suppose if you have uncertainty in some uh, uh, some uh, system where human in intervention is bringing down uh, the uh, system uh, risk or liability then go for optimization but then the optimization is a very tricky uh, uh, solution because you know, there is something called optimum optimization we cannot depend on uh, total automation at the same time we cannot live with uh, with without automation so automation is one of the key figure which reduces uncertainty in uh, in system operation and all that and then finally uh, we know that during emergency condition the human factor uh, re reduces so for that what we can what we do is uh, and computers remain unaffected so data coming from the plant and then it it is uh, if the computer is trained uh, for diagnosis and identification of the scenario then it will help operator to quickly or rather relatively quickly uh, identify the transient what has happened and final diagnostics which component has not uh, uh, performed as uh, per expectation so that uh, the diagnosis is done and plant is uh, brought back to the normal conditions so these are the three and then uh, uncertainty in design and engineering we said conservative margin we have discussed defense in depth also we have discussed single failure, failure criteria redundancy and diversity so these aspects we have discussed in detail uh, now there are some horizontal of uh, uh, these jobs like quality assurance program quality assurance program if you ensure then directly or indirectly uh, our risk related uncertainty related issues to a large extent get resolved so um, quality has served since 60s reliability and risk and all they came much later but then quality has been serving uh, for so many years and i think that is one of the uh, key figure which has given those advances into all safety critical not only safety critical system even normal systems also so and then uh, now we have ventured into an, uh, an advanced era where even uh, operators uh, we know a lot, lot of ai and machine learning uh, tools and methods are being developed but here we have fuzzy logic where in uh, linguistic uh, meaning of the uh, uh, what an human is trying to say or trying to uh, grade certain event or you know component uh, we can convert it into quantitative language and then it can be merged with a risk model so this is one of the biggest advantage of fuzzy logic so uh, having said that uh, how to characterize uncertainty you know um, uh, you know so in risk based engineering what we wanted to do with the uncertainty and what advantages we can have and how to do that actually so um, uh, at one point of time yes we said uh, conservative principles have worked well now but then it is a uh, competitive era and over conservative also bring in some sort of a, uh, inefficiency in the, in the, into the system it becomes bulky uh, the outputs are uh, you know uh, may not be as uh, as expected so um, remove our conservatism and we can do it now because we have material properties so now you can see even uh, even if you see on the road uh, the bridges bridge uh, you know structural technology the the uh, thickness of the pillar and girders and all they have they have uh, they have been brought down just because we know the material better and how the material de degrade that also we know so the protective measure and design measures together they they have they are designed as i would say smart system whether it is a structural system also so uh, uh, remove, remove over conservative then offer rational based and prescriptive uh, and not prescriptive risk Uh, our traditional methods were prescriptive nature if this happens do this if this happens and even today we are continuing but then now the time has come that you know we use rational based approach that means ask computer there are this component is not available 
what is the risk level that is uh, risk monitor and uh, and uh, whether the risk is an acceptable reason so you will find many complex engineering system now using risk monitor in their com uh, you know computer system and whatever we do it should be holistic in nature holistic means all the dimensions of failure all the dimensions of degradation should be modeled and that our model should be robust enough and allow for realistic safety margin if, suppose if you are not able, it's a new component new material then if you don't have data then we'll definitely use safety margin but then the testing and all should be done so that we use have a realistic safety mar uh, margin and optimum uh, uh, design parameters are used uh, for designing the system and then finally uh, whatever experience we have today we require a very efficient approach uh, to integrate the new knowledge uh, coming on the similar aspects should be updated to, to the system. So, uh, in risk-based engineering, uh, whatever I have discussed, one, two, three, four, holistic nature, allow realistic margin. These are our efforts, and uh, how far we are successful only when risk-based engineering culture uh, uh, is implemented, and we have like updating of the data. If I have a system where the uh, uh, insight from the plant is updated on daily basis, if not daily basis, on monthly basis. That means all the data I will have in my database will be a mature data and uh, at the drop of the head we are able to use it. No manual intervention is required. It is computer is uh, uh, you know, updating the data. And for that we have Bayesian approach, Bayesian updating and all that. We can do it. These are mathematical techniques which take old data, new data and then give the best estimate. Creating dynamic aspect of accident scenario. So now we have to move out of risk-based engineering. Uh, the traditionally, we use static, faulty, and inventory and all that. But then from there, we have to move out and uh, get on to the dynamic modeling of the uh, scenario. Because ex when accident happens, it evolves over a period of time. It, it, if you transient, everything happens in a bit of moment. But later on, based on the response of the system, it, uh, it, the scenario develops in a very slow manner. And that dynamism should be implemented into the system. And now in risk-based engineering, there is a consideration. Normally, we use mean value or median value in all our calculations. But then uh, if you don't want to be conservative, but at the same time, we want to remain with the all advances and all that, why not use 90% confidence in, in interval and 95% uh, you know, confidence in data so that neither we are conservative nor we are uh, you know, uh, sort of are taking a lot of uh, uh, advantage of the data and all available. So uh, there, at least for the new system and component, this kind of philosophy uh, can be adopted. And Bayesian mod modeling, uh, you know, this kind of Monte Carlo and all, they can help a lot in this area. Now, uh, uh, if I have to give overview of uncertainty, there are some nine uh, techniques I will be discussing here. So we have seen the definition of risk and uncertainty and then um, uh, salient features of traditional and probabilistic approach that also we have seen and requirement of uncertainty characterization in risk-based engineering that we have discussed I think seven or eight points that I put in the last slide and I think now we are um, mentally ready uh, to uh, discuss the individual aspect of uh, risk. So I uh, will meet you in the next lecture and uh, there we will discuss um, mathematical aspect some extent and later on we will go into the uh, uncertainty modeling technology and in the last we will discuss basic tools base theorem or you know um, Monte Carlo simulation as an individual, uh, individual uh, lecture. Thank you very much.